Hello everyone. Today we will talk about catalysis and catalyst. So what is catalysis? See catalysis is the name of the process in which a substance called catalyst catalyzes a particular reaction. So this is a new term for us that is a catalyst. So what is a catalyst? A catalyst may be defined as the substance which when present in a chemical reaction accelerates its speed and is recovered unchanged in amount and chemical characteristics when the reaction is over. The complete process that is the involvement of the catalyst in a chemical reaction is called catalysis. For example, if we talk about potassium chlorate decomposition, now this decomposition is slow but when it is heated strongly even then the process remains very slow. So on heating potassium chlorate oxygen gas is evolved and this decomposition occurs at 653 to 873 Kelvin temperature. However, in the presence of manganese dioxide the reaction takes place between uh, the reaction takes place uh, at 473 to 633 Kelvin temperature and moreover the reaction speed increases. So this shows the effect of temperature as well as the effect of the catalyst. So here the catalyst has lowered the temperature for the reaction. So there are two more terms related to the catalysis. One is promoter, another is poison. So promoter are the substances that enhances the activity of a catalyst while poisons they decreases the activity of a catalyst. For example, in Heber's process, nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia and here iron is the catalyst. Now the iron catalyst, its efficiency can be increased by a promoter and the promoter which we use here is molybdenum. So molybdenum increases the efficiency of catalyst. Next is catalysis is of two types homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. Homo means same and hetero means different. So homogeneous catalysis is that catalysis in which all the reactants and the catalyst are in the same phase. For example in the contact process sulfur dioxide gas reacts with oxygen gas to form sulfur trioxide gas. The reaction proceeds in the presence of nitric oxide in a gaseous state. So here reactants and the catalyst they are in the same phase. So that's why it's an example of homogeneous catalysis. Similarly hydrolysis of ester. Hydrolysis of ester the ester water as well as the acid they all are in the liquid phase in the same phase so they correspond to homogeneous catalysis. Next is hydrolysis of sugar again it is the homogeneous catalysis. Coming to now heterogeneous catalysis for example sulfur dioxide changes to sulfur trioxide. Now the reaction proceeds in the presence of platinum catalyst which is solid. So since reactant and the catalyst are in the different phase so they refer to the heterogeneous catalysis. Similarly Heber's process, Ostwald process and hydrogenation of vegetable oils in the presence of nickel catalyst. They all refer to heterogeneous catalysis. Next is adsorption theory of heterogeneous catalyst or catalysis. Now adsorption theory of catalysis uh, can be explained in five steps. So these are uh, the five steps are number one diffusion of the reactant to the surface of the catalyst. Number two is the adsorption. Number three is the chemical reaction at the surface of the catalyst. Number four is the desorption of the product formed and number five is the diffusion of the reaction products away from the catalyst. Now what happens during the heterogeneous catalysis that is during heterogeneous catalysis the catalyst will provide the surface to the 
reacting molecules so on the surface of the catalyst there are some unbalanced forces called the free valences now on these unbalanced forces or free valences the reacting molecules will be coming and they will be diffusing towards the surface of the catalyst so once they will be diffusing to the surface of the catalyst they get adsorbed on the surface of the catalyst once they get adsorbed after that some chemical reaction between the reactants takes place leading to the formation of product once the product will be formed or an intermediate will be formed that product will be desorbed from the surface of the catalyst so that the surface should be made available for the reaction to proceed further and at the five the desorbed product will move away from the catalyst so the surface of the catalyst unlike the inner part of the bulk has free valences again which can provide the seed for chemical reaction now let's come to solid catalysts so what are these solid catalysts definitely when catalysis takes place on the surface of the solid means when solid is acting as a catalyst so it is called solid catalyst now th there are few terms uh, or the properties related to this solid catalyst number 1 here is the activity and number 2 will be the selectivity so let's talk about the first important feature associated with solid catalyst that is activity so activity of a catalyst depends upon the strength of chemisorption to a large extent definitely the reactants they must get adsorbed reasonably strongly on the surface of the catalyst to become active but they should not be so strongly adsorbed that they become totally immobilized if they will be so strongly adsorbed and they become immobilized then other reactants will not be able to uh, uh, adsorb on the surface of the catalyst number 2 is the selectivity selectivity of a catalyst so what is the meaning of selectivity of a catalyst the selectivity of a catalyst is the ability to direct a reaction to yield a particular product selectively when under the same reaction condition many products are possible now selectivity of a different catalyst for same reactant is different for example starting with h2 and co and using different catalyst we get different products when co reacts with hydrogen in the presence of nickel catalyst it forms methane gas but when co reacts with hydrogen in the presence of copper and mixture of zinc oxide and chromium oxide it leads to the formation of methanol however when co reacts with hydrogen in the presence of copper metal it leads to the formation of methanol methanol which is an aldehyde next is shape selective catalyst or simply the zeolites so what are zeolites zeolites are nothing they are just the alumino silicates of metals alumino silicates of metals having general formula m x upon n alo2 x sio2 y zh2 so there are z z number of water molecules now here n is just the charge on the metal cation and z is the number of water molecules present the metal cations which are present in zeolites they may be in any positive k positive or ca2 positive so these zeolites in the hydrated form they are used as ion exchangers in removing hardness of water they are if they are heated in vacuum they will lose the water of crystallization or water molecules and they get dehydrated 
so catalytic reaction that depends on the pore structure of the catalyst and the size of the reactant and product molecule is called shape selective catalysis so zeolites are good shape selective catalyst because of their honey comb like structure they have got a very typical structure honey comb like structure in which the size of the pores varies from 200 to 740 picometers so their pore size is just 200 picometers to 740 740 picometers the reactant molecules of a particular size and shape can only enter these pores and can get adsorbed and participate in the reaction if the reactant molecules are of bigger size they will not be able to enter and if they will be of smaller size they will slip through the pores of the zeolite without getting trapped by them so we can say they will not be adsorbed so that means in both the situation in case of bigger size in case of smaller size molecules they will not be in position to take part in a chemical reaction so that's why zeolites are called shape selective catalyst since their activity is linked with pore size now these zeolites they have got three dimensional network of silicates in which silicon atoms are replaced by aluminum atoms giving a l o s i framework next is uses of zeolites now these zeolites are being used widely in the petroleum industry for cracking of hydrocarbons zs zsm5 is being used zeolite with sieve membrane porosity 5 is used for the cracking of hydrocarbons means it will be converting methanol methyl alcohol into the gasoline number 2 zeolites are being used in the removal of the hardness of water next is characteristics of enzyme catalysis so i told that catalyst is a substance which alters the rate of a reaction if that catalyst is catalyzing a biological reaction it is called biochemical catalyst and one of the biochemical catalyst is the enzyme which is proteinaceous in nature so there are few characteristics of enzyme catalysis number 1 they are highly efficient number 2 they are highly specific number 3 they work under optimum temperature conditions number 4 they work under optimum ph number 5 increasing activity in the presence of activators and coenzymes and number 6 inhibitors can poison them inhibitors can stop their activity also so let us talk about mechanism of enzyme catalysis enzyme catalysis now see enzymes are proteinaceous molecule capable of catalyzing biochemical reactions so the mechanism of enzyme catalysis can proceed in three steps number 1 is the binding enzyme to substrate to form a complex now there are number of cavities present on the surface of enzymes these cavities are of definite shape and they possess active groups such as amino carboxyl thiol or hydroxyl group etc now these are actually the active centers on the surface of enzyme so the molecules of the reactant which have complementary shape fit into these cavities just like a key fit into a lock on account of the presence of active groups an activated complex is formed which then decomposes to yield the product so what happens during this process number 1 enzyme reacts with substrate to form enzyme substrate complex this enzyme substrate complex will undergo a chemical reaction 
to get converted into enzyme product complex. Now that enzyme product complex will decompose to give the enzyme and the product. So that's how the products are obtained from the reaction in the presence of enzyme by lock and key mechanism. In the presence of enzyme. Now there are some more points related to catalysis. Especially enzyme catalysis. Number one, enzymes work best in the temperature range of 298 Kelvin to 310 Kelvin temperature. And the pH best suited to them is 5 to 7. So that is the optimum pH 5 to 7.